Hey, and good morning, goodness to you. Depends on when you're watching the broadcast, whether it's morning, noon, afternoon, or evening. But look, I'm Sporty King, and welcome to Gift Friday. Today is my inspirational sharing that I will not be interacting with you in the thread, but I'd love to see your comments because I love you. So, uh, okay, so I actually created Gift Friday. Uh, wait a minute, because my, my printout got messed up. Okay, I'm good. All right, here we go. Okay, okay, okay. All right, let me see. Uh-huh, okay. I hope I don't... Wait, you know what? Let's be real. Let's take a minute and make sure that we, these are in order because then when I read them, they won't be. Okay, good. All right. Okay, cool. All right, here we go. Gift Friday. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Okay. So anyway, I created Gift Friday because so often I hear people say TGIF. Thank God it's Friday. But I say, what good does Friday have to that person that took their last breath on Thursday or any other day before that, in fact? So what I say is, uh, what I've done is I've learned to say TGIT. Thank God it's today. And then TGIT, thank God it's tonight. Because to be able to get up and go through a whole new day and do it again, that's the blessing. And so I learned that lesson from Proverbs, from Psalm 92 and 2, which reminds us it is, it is good to pro proclaim your unfailing love in the morning today, your faithfulness in the evening tonight. And then we extend that message to remind ourselves that we have to be thankful for that beautiful gift of waking up every day. So we, we, we want to also look at the message that we get from TGIF, and let's turn that around to TGIF, thank, trusting God is free. Because what, think about that faithfulness that you have. What do you need to do to get the gift of waking up today. Nothing. It's a free gift. And that's why we have to look at Matthew 6 and 34. Don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. So it really is all about today. So I offer that trusting God is free and reminding us to wake up. And then that moves us into realizing that Hey, when we move the T and TGIF to the end, we find what we really must give thanks for, and that is giving thanks for today, because God is for today. And that's why Gift Friday is my online sharing of my original poems and their possible uses to inspire audiences and you online and in person. Now, each poem will be my gift to you. And what, what you do is hear you, hear me reread it. <clears throat> and then afterwards, I'll drop it in the feed and on my website so that you can download your colorful keepsake copy of the poem and then remember the message. And so, and so what we're going to be doing today is this week's poem is from uh, my book, A Poet in Every Prophet, A Poet in Every Prophet. And the title of the poem is, uh, I'm going to have some fun today. It's called Denying Our Seed. Now, I want you to first recognize <clears throat> that singing is not my gift, <clears throat> but I got to give you a spoiler alert. Remember how when we were young, uh, and we still do it sometimes now, but we used to take the songs and uh, uh, remember, how about when you wrote that first love letter and you took the songs and you put the song titles in the love letter, all right? <laughs> okay, and then even how we used to take songs and change the titles to them, the, the lyrics, okay? So you're gonna hear that in this poem. I'm just letting you know that in advance, but I wanted to give you that up front, okay? So this is called Denying Our Seed. These kids of today won't make it. Denying our seed. These kids of today have no respect. <clears throat> Denying your seed. They have no regard for life. They have no regard for, I'm sorry. These kids of today have no manners. Denying her seed. They have no regard for life. And I'm going to restart. These kids of today won't make it. Denying our seed. These kids of today have no respect, denying your seed. These kids of today have no manners, denying her seed. They have no regard for life, denying his seed. They don't know how good they've got it, 
denying our seed. You see, I remember no. Ooh, see, I knew that was gonna. I knew that was gonna end up happening. There we go. All right. Okay, let me let me take a look at this. Here we go. I'm in, I'm in good shape now. Ain't this fun that this is our broadcast and I can go and let you know what's going on behind the scenes? Okay. Denying our seed. I've lied, taken chances, tried to be an adult when I thought I was supposed to be more responsible based on what I was told I should know by now. Recognizing your seed. I've tried to get into a club underage, played hooky, house, doctor and nurse, had to have messages repeated until I got it. And I didn't get it until I heard it for the first time from my messenger, recognizing her seed. And I've played spin the bottle and RCK, also known as RCF with the right group, hide and go feel, Cops and robbers, cowboys and cowboys, never wanting to be the Indians. And oh my God, I've been overheard using foul language, recognizing our seed. I'm a descendant of a culture that was connected to some sort of enslavement, Holocaust, ignorance, revolution, prejudice, violence, pornography, substance and spousal abuse, discrimination, molestation, and my age group was also the first to experience peer pressure. I remember being rewarded for being stubborn, justifying my character development. Okay, okay, I don't really remember that. But I remember having my normal actions questioned. And I remember wondering how I was ever going to make it when no one understood me. What could I do to prove myself? Did people like me? What was the latest style, the latest fad? Was it for me? Irrelevant. Recognizing his seed. I remember no growing in its intensity. Stop. Wait. Listen, my name, my full name. I've managed to forget how I wondered what would happen if, when, after I tried to do certain things, my mother would react. My father, grandparent, brother, sister, friend, boyfriend, girlfriend, peers, teacher, boss, even how my children would react. I've managed to forget risque, seductive, suggestive words in songs and wanting to get it on or get down tonight by sexing somebody, anybody, everybody up, expecting no romance without finance, since bad and nasty girls weren't worried about doing it to death all night long with somebody else's guy who wasn't wondering who was making love to his old lady while he was out making love. Because as thin as the line was between love and hate, it was clear that Papa was a rolling stone who didn't take no mess. And like Parliament, you could bet your bottom dollar that he would funk you up whenever he felt that funky sensation. And it didn't matter if you knew how to shake your money maker or your booty until your love came down from riding the right horse, the white horse in hot pants or high heel sneakers. If you didn't realize that it takes a fool to learn to love the one you're with and do it till you're satisfied. Have you forgotten how we would tear the roof off the sucker or chase the cat like the dog in me looking for some? sexual healing. (laughs) Oh yes, I believe that if you would let me make love to you, that I wouldn't stop till you asked me to, begged me to, told me to, begged me to get funky with me, Mr. Big Stuff at Lady Marmalade's house. Remember, voulez-vous? How do you like your love? And I only ask because I want to be sure you know that you can't hit and run. Now that you know, I love to love you, baby. So stay in my corner. Let me rub you down with some burning hot oil and take you higher. Come on, sexy mama. You've got to give it up before I let go. Yes, I remember changing some of those lyrics and laughing that they'd never use those words. Do you? 
See, I've managed to forget. I've managed to forget John's, um, oh, where is it? Oops, I don't mind telling you. Oh, okay. Oh, here we go. I've managed to forget John 8. I'm throwing stones like they have been going out of style. See, but yet maybe you've never had the urge to, never flirted, never talked dirty, fantasized, fondled, or faked. Peer pressure has gone away since you've managed to keep up with the Joneses while in your political correctness, you still read the cue cards that said you can do anything you want to do and be anyone you want to be. Waking up and making it through another day free from your addiction, yet not free from the flashback that these kids of today give you. And as the stop sign now looks red to you, you lash out where you could reach out to offer guidance. You give up where you could give hope through your patience. You retreat where you could repeat the lessons, applications, and realities. I'm going to try to remember not to deny my seed when I can recognize it. These kids of today will make it because, and sometimes in spite of the fact that they are related to us kids who weren't supposed to make it, then maybe they'll remember how those kids of tomorrow will make it if they try. You see, I believe that there's no stopping us now. All right. So now, without the non-singing, here's the message of recognition and responsibility in the, in the poem. And I want to just break down some of the, the stanzas. First, the opening stanza. I've lied, taken chances, tried to be an adult. You know, uh, uh, when I was thought I was supposed to be more responsible but based on what I was told, I should know. When you recognize your seed, have you ever told a child what they should know by a certain age? Uh, though, if you really flash back, you didn't learn a 13-year-old message until you were maybe 17, 23, 33. Maybe you only learned the lesson when you saw them get it. Children mimic and mirror adults. If you're not liking what you see in them, double check what you see in yourself. Now, I'm not saying to give them a pass. I'm reminding you to give them a path. They have enough people telling them that they're not adults. Children don't have enough people showing them how to be one. And then the next stanza, I've tried to get into a club underage, played hooky, house, doctor, and nurse, had to have messages repeated until I got it. And I didn't get it until I heard it for the first time from my messenger, recognizing her seat. Yes, yeah, sometimes your mother is your rec is your is your messenger, but still the, the recognizing her seed is recognizing that you are born of a woman and that you've done some. that we have been socialized to learn from repetition. Who is your messenger? We hear things over and over again. Uh, we hear things over and over again, but we don't get it until we hear from our messenger. So we are socialized to learn from repetition. How many times do you have to repeat the word no for a child to figure out that they shouldn't touch the stove? Each child has to actually touch the stove before they learn what hot means. Oh, that's what I meant. How many times have you re to repeat the word hot <laughs> for a child to figure out that they shouldn't touch the stove? Each child has to actually touch the stove before they learn what hot means. And sooner or later, they get to learn how to use the word that they've actually heard the most. And that is the word no. Because as they begin using it, they learn the different results and reactions that it earns them. Next time, Next thing you know, they're understanding the difference between, oh, that's so cute that he said no versus he can't say no. And that's how you have to recognize the seed from your messenger. Then some more things we do. I've played spin the bottle, RCK, RCF with the right groove, hide and go field, cops and robbers, cowboys and cowboys, never wanting to be the Indians. Oh my God, I've been overheard using foul language, recognizing our seeds, some of the things that we do. Remember how we role played with no concern for how the other person felt about the role assigned to them if they wanted to play? 
wanting to be the cops or the cowboys and always deciding that they were the good guys. And how often have you used found foul language around kids and still do? And you have to recognize that words are powerful, W-O-R-D-S, what others remember and digest strengthens spirits. And if your words are negative, W-O-R-D-S becomes what others remember destroy spirits. So what are your words doing? Even sometimes when you're around a kid and you say, oh, the kid is here, you, 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 you say it first and then you say, oh, don't you see the kids are here? You know what? Now the kids are uh, they're listening for that cue. And that sometimes that's how they learn the word. So we just need to be more respons- responsible and recognition of the, the environment before we have to say something like that. That's just something that we do. Not beating up anybody for parenting or, or, or adulting, but just reminding us that somebody is listening. Somebody is listening. Now, here's a good one. Okay, I'm a descendant of a culture that was connected to some sort of enslavement, Holocaust, ignorance, revolution. I'm not going to even read them all, but this is my point. How often have you compared one generation to another? You see, every generation has gone through something that looked different to the one before. And each one has also forgotten how hard they prayed for the next, then didn't recognize their prayers being answered because they didn't think that the next generation appreciated the prayers that they actually didn't know about. Technological advances and shortcuts are long cuts for each generation, and we invented them. Now we want to chastise the next generation as not knowing how good they have it. (laughs) They don't know. So you have to ask, have you taken the time to share the story or have you just screamed the story? Kids didn't ask for remote control. We decided we wanted a remote control. That's the lowest example. But just think about some of the things that you say our kids today uh, aren't appreciating. Back in my day. And remember, and then you know what? Our parents used to look at us and say, back in my day. Each generation has done that. And so we have to recognize that that's the seed that we all have. And see, and then the next standard says, I wonder being, I remember being rewarded for being stubborn justifying my character development. Okay, I don't really remember that, but I remember having my normal actions questioned, right? Because we tell kids part of what we, the story we tell, we tell them how they were when they were younger. And then we tell them a little bit about how they've matured. And then they say, I, but I remember wondering how I was ever going to make it. See, once they we tell them in their teens how they've matured, they wonder how they were going to make it. Was I ever going to make it when no one understood me? Because no one understands us as a teenager. Haven't, us all, haven't we all gone through that? What can I do to prove myself? Peer pressure. Did people like me? Peer pressure doesn't stop even as we go older. What was the latest style, the latest fads? What is for me? Irrelevant. Recognize his seed. Recognize that we are responsible, responsible, responsible for developing the character in each child within the touch of our spirit. How you treat one domino effects to treating another, as well as showing them how to not allow themselves to be treated. And then that leads to the joy. That leads to the joy, J-O-Y, just one you. Where's that? That leads to the J-O-Y, just one you, that God has gifted each of us with and reminding us not to compare ourselves to others, but to compete only with ourselves to be better than we were last time. When you do that, you always get to measure your win. And when you believe in yourself, you always win. So this next stanza gives us some options towards sharing rather than screaming. And it just reminds us that as the stop sign now looks red to you, because see, now we see, oh, that's what stopped me. See, now we recognize that the stop sign is red. So as the stop sign now looks red to you, now that you know better, you lash out where you could reach out to offer guidance. Are you reaching out or are you lashing out? We give up where we could give hope. Are we giving hope by showing how patient we are? And by the way, going back to offering guidance, you know, that's why I always say take care of your PMS, your physical, mental, and spiritual self. When you take care of yourself mentally, you can give good advice. And then you take care of yourself spiritually, you can give good spiritual advice, which is also part of the patience. 
And then, or, and when you take care of yourself physically, you can be there for someone so that you can offer this. And then lastly, do you retreat where you could repeat the lessons, applications, and realities? Let people, let kids know, yeah, I did that. See, sometimes, you know, as adults, we act like, oh, I don't know where they got that from. They got it from you in most cases. And sometimes they got it because you didn't give it to them and you allowed them to learn it from somewhere else. So, you know, I remember one of my mother's biggest you know, the, the worst beating I never got was one where she beat my brother because of some something that someone else had to tell her that he did and then that me and my sister didn't tell her. So we he, she beat him because she told him, you know what? I don't, I don't like somebody coming and telling me what's going on in my house. And she made me and my sister think that we were going to get that same beating, but we didn't. So that's why I say it's the worst beating that I never got. <laughs> But yeah, you know, um, if you're, t- if, you know, my mother shared the lessons, the applications and the realities, I knew that she wasn't a saint and she let, you know, I saw her as a saint, but she let us know one of her favorite lines was, I tried them same tricks when I was your age. I mean, of course I used to laugh in my mind and say, you were never this age, but you know, the, the, the relationship we have with our parents is hilarious. It's going, it's, it's repeating itself. So don't beat the kids up. All right. And this closing stanza reminds us of who we're dealing with and then appreciating them for that blessing. They are related to us kids. These kids of today are related to us kids who weren't supposed to make it. And then maybe they'll wonder how those kids of tomorrow will make it if you believe, make it if they try. You see, I believe that there's no stopping us now. So what I want you to do is believe in yourself enough to know that you can believe in this generation of survivors who learned how to survive by absorbing all the good energy from and through you and the generation of survivors it took to get where you are, which is taken to, 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 taken to get them here. Let's recognize our responsibility for the, the gift that they'll pass along to the next. When you see yourself as an adult, you should remember yourself as a child and then trust the process, not for their sake, but for your peace of mind. When you see yourself as an adult, trust the process, not for your, not for their sake, but for yours. That's how you relieve that stress. It's, it's going to be all right, but are you giving them that guidance to work that thing through? Remember, God would not deny your request for doing that. God sees you and and trusts the process, not for your sake, but for his peace of mind to know that what he is what he uh, what what he has made you out to be, that joy, that J O Y, that just one you is exactly what you're supposed to be. So don't deny your seed, accept your seed, and I thank you for sharing your seed. This has been Gift Friday. I will make sure that I drop a copy of the poem in the feed so that you can get your copy on your wall. Over and out. Ciao.